It's not uncommon for video games to be based on a movie, but it's not really that often to see one done for a horror game. For some reason, in 2009, some company called Feel Plus Games decided to make a Wii game based on the Japanese horror film series Juon, more commonly known in the West for the 2004 American remake called The Grudge. The Japanese original, Juon The Grudge, was the third film in a series of low-budget indie horror films by director Takashi Shimizu. After the success of the first two, which were direct to DVD, the third film was released in theaters. It received mixed reviews, but did well in the box office and had since developed a cult following. The plot follows a woman who moves into a cursed home and has to deal with the ghost of a long-haired Japanese girl and a little boy. What made the film so iconic was a character Kayako, her long black hair, and the clicking moan she would do. The series would spawn countless sequels and remakes. I mean, they still make these movies today in both Japan and America. I remember watching the American version years ago, and I didn't really think too much of it. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. You really don't hear too much about the series these days, at least not in North America. I think it's still pretty big in Japan, but I mean, the last American film was only quietly released on DVD with no actual theatrical release. However, if there's one piece of media in the series I did hear about when it was new, it was the Wii game, Ju on the Grudge Haunted House Simulator. In a 2009 issue of Famitsu, it was reported that Takashi Shimizu, the director of the films, was working on a Wii title called Feel. The game was revealed to be based on the Juon series and debuted at E3 the same year. The game was then released the following October in North America to extremely negative reviews. It was a commercial flop, selling very poorly and quickly faded into obscurity. It's since become a bit of a collector's item, the price typically fluctuates fluctuates between 40 and 90 bucks on eBay, depending on how many copies are available at one time. The only thing keeping that price from skyrocketing is that GameStop still charges 35 bucks for copies, if you can actually manage to find a location that has the game in stock. Once GameStop no longer sells Wii games, this one's gonna get pretty expensive. As a horror game enthusiast, I do like to give every little obscure game a shot, even if it ends up not being very good, so... Why don't we get started? The game begins with some live footage of somebody approaching the cursed house from the movie. Inside, they find the place has been trashed and they see Kayako and you, spooky. This beginning video is very low budget. They probably could have just used something from one of the movies. It would have looked a lot better. Apparently, they actually went to the house they filmed the movie at so they can map it out and recreate it one for one in the game. So it wouldn't really surprise me if they just filmed this bit while they were there one day. All right, so when you start up the game, it'll ask you to pick a gender and a zodiac sign. Weird, but okay. Here we go, the first level, a rundown factory. The story follows a young girl trying to find her dog and she just ends up in this factory, sweet and simple. So you'll use the Wii remote to aim the flashlight around and you'll, um... Oh, what? The, apparently the game's not nunchuck compatible. That's so weird. How how do I move then? It's not the it's not the D-pad. It's, it's it's oh, it's the B button. How you hold the B button to move forward? Oh no, this already isn't very promising. All right, so basically how it works? Uh, imagine a first-person game on Wii, like Metroid Prime 3 or something. You know, you aim to the sides to turn, which is fine. But imagine instead of using a stick to move, you can only hold the B button to move in the direction you're facing. That's it. You can't stray for anything. It's just these wonky first-person motion control tank controls. I find that turning can be really unresponsive too. I mean, sometimes I'll aim the remote to the left and I just won't turn or I'll turn really slowly. And I see people complain about motion controls all the time when they're really just doing it wrong, but believe me, I've played Wii games for years and I'm really good at finding those sweet spots where things work and where they don't, you know. I actually realize I have to conform my actions to do what the game needs from me instead of expecting the opposite like I see many people do, but I can say with all certainty, the game is pretty unresponsive and by extension, and... <laughs> 
frustrating. I would often open the Wii home menu just to make sure the cursor is still on screen, and it is. There's no reason why it should stop moving me. I don't know why it does it. Something as simple as moving really shouldn't be this much of a chore. Anyway, there's really not much to the gameplay. You'll explore your environment, open doors or whatever, look for keys, and just find a way to the end of the level. Good lord, the walking speed in this game is something else. I don't know if I've ever played a game where you walk this slow. Holy. I mean, you're seeing this right yeah no this is just how fast you go there's no sprint or run button no it's just this for the entire game and I understand that things are definitely scarier if you take it at a slower pace I think PT did that pretty well you don't go crazy fast in that game either but this speed this is pushing it they should have at least made it a little bit faster as you play the level you'll encounter Kayako and Toshio in a number of scares I guess haunted house simulator is really the best way to describe this game. You walk around until you find a scary event you can watch. At first, I actually found the game to be kinda scary. The environment is super dark, only being illuminated by your flashlight, and the settings are pretty creepy. An old factory, hospital, you know. You'll hear that iconic clicking moan, and, like the films, it builds anticipation. I always say that anticipation is one of the most important elements of effective horror, and this game uses something iconic to achieve that. Until I played more and then I realized that most of the game's scares are just jump scares. You know, a hand grabbing you when you open the door, or Toshio popping into frame. What, what was that? He just slides in like he's on a skateboard. It's so dumb. Whoa, what are you doing, you little kid? You're just jumping up in front of me. A lot of the game scares are also really scripted, and they take control away from the player, making it feel more like a movie. It makes them so predictable. I mean, look, the player camera smoothly floats into position and focuses on something as if the game's like, hey, look right here. Yeah, you see that, huh? Huh? It literally tells you there's going to be a scare and points you at it. But like, then I know it's coming and it's not going to be scary. I mean, it's cool to use sound design to build anticipation because then you still don't know when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, or what's going to happen, but when you do it this way, you kind of know all of those things. I suppose this might be their way of making the scares happen on camera, making sure you don't miss them, but this on-rails method just makes them really predictable and not very effective. I mean, there are some effective scares in this game, like when the game just put something there that wasn't there before, like in the apartment level, on your way back down the stairs, they spawn Toshio in front of the door. You might not even notice him until you get close. It's really subtle and dang, it got me spooked. I really wish they did stuff like this more often instead of taking the camera and being like, ooh, look at me, I'm scary. It's just, no. <laughs> there was also a point that I realized the only things I'm gonna see is one of these two ghosts, Toshio or Kayako. The game's not gonna get any scarier than that. Any other horror game would throw something new or unexpected your way, but when you focus the game around just two ghosts, well, you don't have much reason to expect the unexpected. Some encounters with Kayako will enter a motion control quick time event where you'll have to swing the Wii remote in the direction shown on screen. It's responsive enough, but I still found them incredibly frustrating just for the fact that the prompts are very sudden and expects you to react to them way too quickly, and if you fail just one, you'll die, and your sorry butt gets sent to the beginning of the stage and you'll have to do everything all over again, which wouldn't be a huge deal if you didn't walk so slow. You'll be able to get back to where you were pretty easily because you know what to do already, but even just doing that takes forever just because of this walking speed. I really grew to dread these quick time events and for the wrong reason. Not because I was scared, but because I was annoyed by the idea of losing 20 minutes of progress just because of crummy controls. That is, until I realized you can just violently spin around the controller and win every single one. Your flashlight only has so much battery power, and it runs out quickly, so you'll have to pick up more batteries as you go along. This is crucial to finishing a stage. You're gonna have to actively look for batteries if you want to stay alive. If the battery runs out, Kayako gets ya, and it's game over. You might think that this could create a feeling of panic, you know, oh no, my, my battery's running out, but it just felt really frustrating. The animation that plays when you die 
die is exactly the same each time, so it's not going to be something that's going to scare you. You're just going to get really annoyed that you now have to do everything all over again. The game's got four main scenarios. The first is that rundown factory with the girl looking for her dog. The second is a girl who wakes up in an abandoned hospital. The third is a delivery dude mailing a package. And the fourth is a security guard patrolling an office building. It's really funny how they use the exact same character model for every character, like I'm supposed to believe a 50-year-old security dude is going to have the exact same hands as a teenage girl. The goal of every level is to find your way to the end, collecting a series of keys to unlock different doors and essentially escape Kayako. Though everyone ends with Kayako murdering your character anyway, so I don't even see what the point is in giving me a game over for dying one minute prior to when I'm supposed to die at the end. The game's progression never gets clever like Silent Hill does with keys. I mean, you might expect an item or something that you have to use as a key in a certain clever way, but no, in this game it's just actual keys and never anything more interesting than that. There's a number of hidden items you can find in every level, though, and if you can get every single one, you'll unlock the hidden fifth stage, which is the house that the film takes place in. Getting the items isn't too much of a pain in the ass, because you don't actually have to finish the level to keep them. If you find them all and then let Kayako kill you, you'll go back to the title screen with the item still in your inventory, which was nice. I'm glad the game didn't make me walk very slowly to the level's ending again, but it's still a tedious effort because you'll have to walk very slowly to find each item. The fifth stage really isn't worth it. It's not much scarier or any more interesting than the previous ones. I suppose if you're a fan of the films and wanted to explore the house yourself, yeah, I can see that being cool, but otherwise I really wouldn't bother trying to unlock it. Actually, I wouldn't really bother playing this game at all, to be honest. I really think Jew on the Grudge is one of the worst horror games I've ever played. I mean, there are a couple of decent scares in here, but those are mostly swept to the side in favor of these scripted and very predictable ones. Can you imagine if every time something scary happened, I took the camera and I was like, hey, look at that painting in the background. See that painting? And then the scare happened out of the painting and you weren't scared by it because I forcefully took your view and directed your focus towards it so you completely saw it coming. That's what this entire game is. It's not effective whatsoever. Even if they had the director of the actual movies on board, you can really tell he might know how to make a scary movie, but he does not know how to make a scary game. That is the problem with a film director directing a video game. They go into it with a cinema mindset. To them, if something scary happens on camera, it's gonna scare people, but it's very different when it's a video game. Your scares have to be interactive. The player themselves have to be the one who stumble upon them. You can't take the camera and force the camera to look at them. It's just not gonna work. The game totally lacks atmosphere and sound design. That's a super important thing, and this game just doesn't have it. I mean, listen right here. Tell me what he hear. Swings, swinging, yeah, but it's just the one sound effect looping. It sounds so mechanical, so fake. No chain swinging, no dangling, no wind blowing. There's no dynamic to the soundscape surrounding the swing set. It's just the exact same squeak over and over and over. And over here, the, this tarp blowing in the wind? Yeah, exact same deal, just the one bland sound looping again and again. What about ambience? No, there's like none. There's just silence. There's like no ambience at all. No, no creepy sound design whatsoever to make you feel on edge. The music's the exact same way. There's like two songs. It's it's like, oh, a spooky's gonna happen. Here's the spooky music. It's the same every time. It feels so copy and pasted. There's nothing organic about it whatsoever. Go into the school in Silent Hill and tell me what you hear. Now, what do you hear in Juwan? There's also this secondary game mode called Courage Test. You know what it is? It's exactly the same as the main game, except you can't collect the hidden items. I guess the main point of it is to let a friend play because they can choose a different zodiac sign and gender while still playing the levels you've unlocked. When you either die or complete a stage, it gives you this stupid horoscope reading about how you react to things that are scary. I have no idea how it calculates it, but it's really not interesting enough to warrant caring about it. There was this one kinda cool idea regarding multiplayer though, when playing at any time a friend can push a button on the player 2 Wii remote to trigger a scare, but they're all just jump scares and they're all really dumb. Boo! Boo. Boo. Ah. 
Ooh. The game's just not very effective, nor is it very fun either. The game's molasses pace just makes everything so boring. Yeah, the game does have a couple of decent ideas, but overall, it's all executed very poorly. The only reason I can think of that someone would want to play this game for is because they're a big fan of the source material, and they can imagine that maybe exploring the actual cursed house themselves would be kind of fun, but A, it's not, and B, the length you have to go through to even unlock the house from the movie is way more than you should invest your time in. So, to anyone out there that's a fan of the Juwan series, do yourself a favor, just stick with the movies.